Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I'm doing just a little bit of last minute Christmas crafts and thought I'd check in with you and see if you wanted to hang out and craft along. Um, this one's a really simple one. It doesn't have a lot of in-depth instructions. Uh, I'm going to be doing a sign but not using vinyl. I'm actually going to just be using contact paper because I'm cheap. Um, so... Today, I'm going to be using some of the black ready board foam core. Um, I've got this sheet cut down to 20 by 26. You can use it at, a, at its full size if you want to. I just happened to cut mine down um, because I, I didn't want it quite as long of a rectangle as what it was. But you could do whatever size you wanted to, whatever phrase you wanted to. I just wanted to kind of show you some... Um, some things that you can do to make signs on this stuff. So I already have out some of my pre-painted foam core strips to use for my framing. The video on how to do the wood look, those are kind of their own tutorial and um, you can check those out separately. Find whichever one that might fit your decor needs do your frame that way, trim them down, and put those to the side to dry because we're going to jump into what I did with contact paper. So instead of using regular vinyl, I'm just using this um, kind of creamy beige modeled color contact paper. I'm not sure. It's supposed to be like a marble look or some kind of natural stone maybe look. Um, that's what I'm going to be using in place of my vinyl. And instead of using regular transfer paper, I'm using just this clear version of the contact paper as my transfer paper. So I already cut out my wording and already started trimming on it. And you can kind of see what a mess this ends up looking like. Um, there are some warnings that I want to give as far as playing with vinyl or anything sticky and certain types of your foam core sheets. When we're doing it with, if you're wanting to do it like on this surface, um, there's a couple of videos up and it shows some tips and tricks on getting it on our, um, our faux wood painted surface. Because we're using wax paints on this surface, that waxy surface makes it a little harder to stick and it takes just a little more effort to um, get it to want to kind of stick itself down. When you're using just the solid foam core, like I'm going to be using the black, this one is especially tricky, and here's why. Um, the black is not solid all the way through. There is a white under surface of it, and I don't just mean the foam. I believe that the paper itself is just printed black, and the paper itself on the underside is white. Um, so it takes very little stick to this papery surface before it wants to peel up and kind of reveal like that white tear mark underneath it so we have to be really careful with this and um honestly i can't even begin to tell you how it's going to go because i've had it work really well and i've had it fail um because i got a little too anxious on pulling everything up and tore my black surface so I'm hoping today that I will not do that in front of you because I really want this sign. The one thing that I'm going to recommend with either one of these um, which is a little bit of a disappointment because the transfer tape is what helps us keep everything straight and aligned. You honestly want to trim as much of that off as you can and a lot of times I will just cut mine out and lay them like you would a sticker without using the transfer paper. Um, just to be a little on the safer side, I am going to give it my best patient try today and just kind of show you I'm cutting away as close as I really can to expose my letters and not have as much of that transfer tape on there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming this out. And then we are going to pop our frame on here and try to lay this down. And I'm going to show you um, how that works out. And hopefully if I make any mistakes, you can learn from those mistakes so that you can get this and do it right. Okay, look, I got all my pieces trimmed out. So I'm going to hurry up and hop to getting my frame on. 
um, or at least cut down. I'm not sure if I'm going to glue it just yet. I might glue three sides of it so I can still kind of get to it easily. Um, in order to do this, I'm actually going to miter this one here lately. I've been taking the cheaters way out and just kind of bumping them up together, but I'm going to miter this one and I'm going to show you really quickly how to do that. Um, in order to get your length for whatever your miter piece is going to be, you are going to go by the actual length of whatever this project is that you're wanting to frame out. So mine is at 26 inches, the long ways, and I'm going to mark that so I can trim that piece and this piece as that full 26 inches from end to end. Um, there's been questions to me about whether or not you're adding extra to get that pointed part of the miter and you're not you're actually going completely flush with every single edge you're going to match to that so those two are marked for the full length of the long side and we'll do the same thing for the full length of the short side we'll go in and mark these guys and trim them to that shorter length which should be 20 inches on this piece and i'm just going to mark that and I'll go ahead and trim these. So you can see here what I've done is trimmed each one of these down length to length. And now to get our 45, this is really the simplest way I know how to explain it. My strip itself right here is an inch wide. So I want to make a perfect square on the end of this. Let me get that out of the way. And I'm going to mark this so you guys can see. I've come over an inch and given myself kind of this perfect square. When you go in half on the diagonal of a perfect square, you get a 45 degree angle and that's what makes our miter. And we're going to do this to every single end of all four of these pieces. And as we're doing it, you want to make sure that you're putting that longer point along the same side so on this one i'm going to come over mark my inch out so my longest point is up here i want to do the same thing and make sure i'm going up to that top with that longest point And to catch right along on these corners, especially, or anytime you're cutting off a small sliver like this, or just cutting in general, if you start your blade above the piece that you're trying to cut into, you're going to have that pressure down really nicely so it bites into that rather than just dragging it. If you start right there, you have to kind of break that surface and it drags. So when you start up here, it just slices straight through. Um, that's especially helpful when you're trying to cut like these little bitty um, corners and get that cut pretty precise. So the last thing that I'm going to do is make sure that all of these have my angles. And I'm going to go ahead and come in with my little sponge that's still damp and just kind of fill that in just so I don't have any white showing through. Now my frame pieces are ready to pop into place and I'm just going to be using some regular... Dollar Tree hot glue sticks and a whole lot of hot glue on here and tack down my little framing edges here. Trying to get them pretty secure along this edge so that when I go in and kind of paint this um, white part of the black foam core edge that it all blends in to look like a nice solid frame. And I'm only going to come around and do three sides of this right now until I get my lettering down. Um, and I'm going to tell you the main reason I'm doing that just to kind of put that idea in your head when you're doing this. Um, that way, if I rest my arms down while I'm trying to lay those down uh, against, let's say, this bottom edge while I'm applying it, I don't have to worry about denting um, these frame pieces. So as long as I don't have one in place, I can kind of rest my arms and use them to stabilize myself while I'm sticking down those letters. And I don't have to crease, uh, worry about creasing my frames as bad. So 
those three sides are popped in place and now I'm just going to kind of look and see where I want my arrangement to be now that I've got everything trimmed off um, pretty closely. And I, I don't know about this font. I really don't know what font it was. I wanted to say though, um, it was in the A's. I didn't go past the A's. So look for a cursive font in the Cricut files under the A's. And the only reason I know this is Basecamp is because Basecamp was one of the first Cricut cartridges I ever owned. So this is about how I'm going to lay mine out. Um, really quick just because i'm eyeballing so much of this i am going to kind of measure and make sure that i'm getting um a nice spacing i feel like uh just eyeballing it so so i'm not going to be completely perfect on this and I feel like I'm, I'm pretty cool with the way that it's spaced right now. So I'm going to take my ruler as a cheat, pop it against the edge of my frame there and kind of use that as my grid line to apply this. And I'm going to do this very carefully. Um, I'm just going to make a little mark right about here for my letter C to start. Slide this out of the way. This is where, this is probably the hardest part about it is getting these letters laid down and your transfer tape back up. Actually, this is usually the hardest part for me is to peel that up. So it gets a little tricky. Part of the reason why my Christmas word is split in half um, is I felt like because of how I had to cut it this way that taking some of that length off would make it a little less floppy once I cut it down like this. So I'm just going to try to get it set up on here. And I'm going to get this applied down and I'm going to show you kind of where you've got to take your biggest caution getting this to work for you. Okay, so I've got everything placed down and I already took a little cheat here and um, started with my Mary. So a couple of things that I have done is I'm using a popsicle stick rather than my normal um, Cricut tools just because this foam dents so easily that um, I really don't want to take the risk with one of my harder type tools. So if you notice, my transfer tape is still kind of flicked up there. I didn't press it down and rub it, um, kind of scraper it down like we usually do because I do not want um, a major adhesion of the transfer tape part. I'm only wanting the contact paper part. So what I've gone through and done is I kind of took the narrow part of my stick and only hit where my letters were but you can see there is not full contact there with my transfer paper so i'm just going to come in kind of get my little transfer paper started i'm going to go really gently and i didn't get that laid super well there we go also if you're transfer paper slash clear contact paper is new stick it to your shirt stick it to the floor stick it to your carpet stick it somewhere so that it's not quite as sticky so you don't have um, as much of the glue and adhesive residue on there so i've got this started pretty good i'm just going to take this popsicle stick and i'm pushing downwards on my popsicle stick while lifting my transfer tape, I'm almost pulling it back and flipping it over that popsicle stick. And I'm trying to do it in a weird way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm pulling it back straight backwards this way. And it works so much better to go this route, especially when you're dealing with foam core. And 
most specifically the colored foam core um because i know black's not the only color it comes in but most of those the paper surface is not a solid color it's usually just a printed color and that means that paper is got like a white core and i'm gonna find a scrap really quick that i can try to show y'all on let's see if i can get it to rip my transfer tape now has has gotten less sticky but this paper surface is going to be very easy to accidentally tear and you can kind of see how those layers are um, and you end up with white showing through and I don't want that to happen especially when I'm using a color like black uh, so that's kind of my tips on doing this uh, and take your time. Uh, patience is not usually one of my biggest virtues with this, which is why you don't see me actually do a lot of vinyl. Um, I don't have the patience for weeding, which is funny because I've been a paper crafter for years. But this, just take your time. Um, it's the best thing I can tell you. And more specifically, especially when you're working on a surface that's already been faux painted with the wood look. Take your time, go over it like a million and one times with a popsicle stick really flat so you can put some pressure and really smooth that down, especially when you're working with real vinyl and that wax surface because that wax surface is essentially like the wax surface that comes on the back of vinyl. Um, it's essentially kind of like that surface, which is why it doesn't want to stick all that great. Um, but I do know that there have been people that were still struggling with the foam core, the vinyl, the um, paint finish, and the vinyl. So those are a few tips. There are several other videos that are labeled uh, with vinyl use on them that have a lot more in-depth uh, tips where I've done those previously. But I did kind of want to revisit some of those little tips because um, I know a few of you are still working on last minute Christmas items like me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting this off. Here we go. I am done removing my transfer tape. Now I can come in um, and put this bottom piece on without having to worry about elbowing it and bending it. And my last touch would be to paint out the white edges um, and you absolutely can do this in vinyl for people that are totally dedicated to vinyl um, but I'm going to be honest I'm okay with how this looks and this is for a dollar a roll um, even a really good deal on vinyl you're typically not getting it for a dollar a roll and for a seasonal craft that I know I'm likely to change my mind um, between now and next Christmas I'm okay with doing it this way. It's a fine investment for a short-term season, holiday, that kind of thing. Um, even for making signs for a birthday party, this is a good route to go. Um, and keeping it cheap. I know that's a very simple piece. It's something that I saw on um, a fireplace on Pinterest. And I will try to find that piece. Um, it was something similar to it. It's all it said was Merry Christmas. I really liked it. And kind of had to have one of my own. So I hope it at least gives you some ideas of using um, just your contact paper. They have a couple of options. Um, and I feel like it's pretty cost effective to go this route. You wouldn't even have to use transfer paper if you're any good at peeling and sticking things by hand. Um, and it would probably make the process even easier for you. I did really well on this one. I'm glad to see that. I did not pull any of my black surface off and rip it. Um, I like this kind of cream color with that little bit of mutedness in there. It almost makes those letters look like they're vintagey on there. Um, so that's it, guys. I hope you guys get a chance to do a little more crafting before the Christmas season is up. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, y'all.